উনিশশো সালে পাকিস্তান সেনাবাহিনী ও রাজাকারদের দ্বারা এদেশের মানুষদের হত্যার ব্যাপারে এক বিশেষ বৈশিষ্ট্য ছিল যে এসব লাশের কোনো সৎকার হতো না পৃথিবীর সব ধর্মে সব সংস্কৃতিতে মৃতদেহের প্রতি সম্মান দেখানোর রেওয়াজ রয়েছে এমনকি তা যদি শত্রুপক্ষের লাশও হয়ে থাকে কিন্তু পাকিস্তানি সৈন্যরা বাংলাদেশের মানুষদের হত্যা করে তাদের লাশ ফেলে রাখত নদীর পারে খালের ধারে রাস্তার পাশে বাড়ির উঠোনে সর্বত্রই কেবল মাত্র নিজের পছন্দ মতো ব্যক্তি ও দলকে ভোট দেবার জন্যে এত বড় মূল্য পৃথিবীর আর কোনো জনগোষ্ঠীকে দিতে হয়নি যা উনিশশো একাত্তরে দিয়েছে বাংলাদেশের মানুষ এই বর্বর গণহত্যা ও নিপীড়নের বিরুদ্ধে রুখে দাঁড়ায় বাংলার তারুণ্য ওই যে বাংলার এক কবি লিখেছিলেন এখন যৌবন যার যুদ্ধে যাবার তার শ্রেষ্ঠ সময় দলে দলে বাঙালি যুবক তরুণেরা মুক্তিযুদ্ধের ট্রেনিংয়ে অংশ নিতে ভারতে গমন করে এদের সংখ্যা ছিল লক্ষ লক্ষ আমি আরো শপথ করিতেছি যে মুক্তি বাহিনীর একজন সৈনিক হিসাবে আমার মাতৃভূমির স্বাধীনতা সার্বভৌমিত্ব রক্ষার্থে সর্বশক্তি নিয়োগ করিব মূলত বেঙ্গল রেজিমেন্টের সৈন্যরা আধা সামরিক ইপিআর সদস্য পুলিশ আনসার মুজাহিদ ছাত্র এবং বাংলার গ্রাম ও শহরের দেশপ্রেমিক তরুণদের নিয়ে গঠিত হল মুক্তি বাহিনী বাছাই কৃতদিন নিয়ে প্রথমে স্বল্প মেয়াদি প্রশিক্ষণ দেয়া হত যত সামান্য অস্ত্র নিয়ে তাদেরকে মুখোমুখি হতে হয় পেশাদার ও দুর্ধর্ষ পাকিস্তান সেনাবাহিনী Welcome to today's episode of Talking Point. I'm your host, Syed Niaz Ahmed. You've just seen a short clip from a film, 1971. It's about the liberation of Bangladesh. You saw the atrocities, you saw the preparation for war, and uh, you saw scenes from Mujib Nagar and oath-taking ceremony. In our studios today, we have an ex-army officer, uh, somebody who in his pre-teens saw the liberation war, suffered the pangs of what a refugee goes through in refugee camps. He's a speaker, a businessman, a writer, and an observer of things that go around. Welcome to the show, sir. How are you? Thank you. Good evening. I'm fine. Thank It's you. It's a pleasure having you today, and uh, I am uh, so glad that you could make it today all the way from Northampton, and what a drive of four and a half hours. It's always a pleasure. When it comes to liberation war, a subject which is uh, very, very close to my heart, I'm ready to undertake any kind of travel that there could be. It's no less, no more what I have faced in 1971. Great. As a teenager, rather pre-teen, you witnessed events that changed you, the country, and the entire nation. You and your new life, your career, how did it impact you? I remember you were talking about once that uh, you watched the, uh, uh, the, the, the Mukti Judha coming in. 
to the city. I don't remember whether it was Sirlet or somewhere else, you see. And you were on the shoulders of your uncle? My brother. Your brother. Well, Shadanata uh, Juddha, the Liberation War of Bangladesh, literally, it just unfolded in front of my eyes. Uh, if you remember the tumultuous... Do you remember the date? Yeah, I do. I'm, I'm very good in dates, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, you know the uh, tumultuous times that we were living in Brahmanbaria at the time. Yeah. And my father was in transition from Dhaka. He was transferred to Silet. That's happening mm -hmm. in, the, in the last week of February. Was he working for the forces? Yeah, he was in EPR, East Pakistan Rifles. Mm -hmm. So he, he was posted in Dhaka. And uh, in February last week, luckily, he was transferred to Silet. And uh, in f from the 7th of March, after the, um, that heroic speech by none other than the father from of the, the nation, uh, school, colleges, everything stopped. So my brother was 17 year old. He was appearing 1971 metric, which was supposed to happen in April the 3rd or something. So he was at home studying, so, and I didn't have any school to go to. I was 10, 11 years old at the time. So we two started going into all the processions, all the meetings, all the road barricades, all night vigils with uh, Humayun Bhai. He was the VP of um, uh, Brahman Baria College, Kutub Bhai, Shachu Bhai, he was the MP. <coughs> then uh, Mr. Azam, mm -hmm. and today's uh, even Muktadir Bhai, who is MP now, uh, from uh, Brahman Baria. So we were busy out in the street and that was the first time in my life I did not have any restriction from my mom to not to go anywhere. Keep or the timings. Yeah, <laughs> I don't have to have any timings and because I was with my brother I had no problem going out. So we were actually literally from 7th March to run up to the 25th of March, the crackdown, we are literally on the street. It just yeah, happened. But, but you had a different breakdown, uh, background, isn't it? You see, your father was with the forces uh, and uh, you knew so many people and they were all involved in that. But was this feeling amongst the masses, all the people of your area? Yes. Brahman Baria was thriving city and it is very politicized, mm -hmm. very proactive, uh, very you know, independent, very nationalistic you know, in that way. So the, up and down the whole town and the whole subdivision was literally, literally fuming and it was exploding to go. So on the 23rd mm, or 22nd, if I'm not wrong, we were in Niaz Mahmud Stadium. This instead of March. Yes, these areas are very close to our heart because, uh, as it happens, my father was the first batch uh, of the Brahman Baria College in 1949. So he used mm -hmm. to take us around all this area, show us around where he used to live, where was the hostel, where was the college. So we were in that area and we saw army, you know, the tiger's batch. The beef sign was mm -hmm. the tiger, roaring tiger, that was the 14th division. So they just drove past Brahman Baria very casually. And at about nine o'clock at night, another body of troops came in and they camped in Yaj Muhammad Stadium. So we could find out that this is for Bengal. We, I had no knowledge of, uh, I have never seen any East Bengal regiment before. So the crackdown happened on the 25th and uh, on 26th night, the first revolt, I guess, ever happened in the whole of Bangladesh that was in Four Bengal, which was led by none other than Major Shafa Jamil. Mm -hmm. And by the time it became <coughs> morning, the train loads of Biharis were cashling in from Akhaura, from left side, and from Bhoirab, and they were all arrested together, but there was no uh, killing or anything. All the army soldiers and the officers, including the commanding officer of the Forest Bengal Regiment, if I'm not wrong, he was also a Pakistani Punjabi. They were arrested, they were not killed or anything, but we started uh, if you have been to Brahman Bay, there's a road that goes to Kumilla and there's a bridge called Kurilla Bridge mm -hmm. and we started digging so that <coughs> the Pakistan advancing troops cannot come. We dug minimum 12 feet ditch and 12 feet by 12 feet so even the tank cannot cross the bridge. We've done all of that and 20... Did you blow up the bridge? 
No, no, no. We didn't have no means to blow. We just had the roadblocks, you know, cutting all these coroigas and trees, falling on the water, uh, on the road, so that nothing can come. So then, the, then Tal Shahar is the side that goes to Brahman uh, Bhairab. We cut the railway line. We went to Pagachong Way towards Brahman Baria to Akhaura. We took the lines off so that nothing can come from Kumila Cantonment. I'm a 10 year old, bear in mind, and the thrill, the adrenaline, the, 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 the buzz, and the camaraderie is enormous. I mean, we all had broken voices because we were shouting at the top of our voice. And <coughs> 27, 28. Did you really see real action? I mean, this is the preparation. Yeah. That they are coming, they are coming. Yeah, they are coming, they are coming. I, I, we did real action. I saw it was a lot, lot late. Brahman Baria was independent till 11th of April. Mm -hmm. It's right in the middle of the country. Just imagine that hub where Kumilla has been fallen, Bhairav has fallen, Akhaura has fallen, Dhaka has fallen, Maimon Singh, Kishore Gonj, everything has fallen. But still, even Silat has fallen on the 30th of um, uh, March, if I'm not wrong. 1st of April, Silat fell. So, uh, Brahman Bariya is still independent. And 28th morning, at about 10, 11 o'clock, we were all standing in Matri Shodan. Uh, Kumar Shell Road, we were standing uh, minimum 5,000 Brahman Baria population and a few lorries walked in, stopped, and man came out of the lorry. He just, <coughs> uh, if you remember 1969, I think my father was a little bit leftist minded, so he always used to give me left leaning books to read. <laughs> so he gave me Che Guevara's, you know, there was a magazine on uh, the death of Che Guevara in Peru, uh, in Lima, where he was Bolivia. killed, Bolivia, sorry. So I read about it and I saw a man coming out of the lorry, just replicates like Che Guevara, you know, a cigarette on his lips. The hairs were a little bit longer than an army officer. A hat put in his, um, into the shoulder strap and walking out very casually. And somebody said, is Major Khaled Musharraf. But Brahman Baria, we don't pronounce K, mm -hmm. we pronounce K for Ha. You know, so Khaled Musharraf became Khaled Musharraf. Mm -hmm. And the, the whole town just erupted into fury, as if Akhalez has come back from winning the, um, uh, what do you call, uh, Troy after the, after the Trojan War, you know. And just the fury was, he just came and saved us. So what happened then, it is, it is a sad thing that how seniority in the army plays a important role. Shafat Jamil was the hero, but he gave everything to the altar of Khaled Musharraf and Sir, take you over. So then it was more organized, more organized in the sense we had, they instructed us to have um, air shelter bunkers and everything. Every house had air shelter bunkers. And we thought we will survive. We will not be uh, you know, uh, captured by Pakistan army. But on the 9th of April, four savages came and they literally pounded for about 14, 15 minutes. I have never seen noise, so, so ferocious noises. We all went into the, of, uh, the air, air, aircraft, uh, uh, I mean, what do you call it, bombing, air bombing happened. Tita's gas was in, in fire and everything. The whole town was running amok. And on this 11th, of April, they came and 39 minutes of bombing. And well, we need to have a break, <laughs> and when we come back, we will definitely talk about better things. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for being with us. Uh, we need to have this short break. Don't go away. We'll be back soon. <laughs>